Hey guys, welcome back to the Steve and the Alien tutorial series. My name is Chad Trofgerben, and in this video, we'll be taking Steve's construction a little bit further by applying switch layers. Now, switch layers essentially allow us to create multiple instances of an image and switch them in and out anywhere on the timeline whenever we see fit. So this could work for, let's say we have multiple instances of a mouth moving. We could do one closed, one slightly open, one all the way open, and we could then switch those instances whenever we wish just by using one layer. So for this particular lesson, we're going to be focusing on the eyes and the mouth of Steve. We'll apply switch layers for each so that later on we can use these switch layers when creating our animation. So to get started, First, we'll need a switch layer, and we're going to start with the eyes. So, come over here to your layers box, click on the eyes, and go to new layer, switch. Here, we'll type out eyes switch, and hit enter. Now, in order for our eyes to be a part of the switch layer, we'll need to drag them into the switch layer. So, grab your eyes, click and drag into the switch layer. Once we do this, your eyes may snap somewhere else because they are being repositioned within that new layer. We can easily correct this by taking our translate layer tool and nudging them back where they need to go. Now you could avoid this altogether if you were to draw out the vector graphic in the switch layer right away. And this is something I usually do, but again, since I'm doing a tutorial, I want to break everything down in an easier to digest manner. So that's why I'm putting switch layers separate, which is why we are creating them separately from the initial character construction process. So now we need to make the eyes closed. We need to make that instance. The easiest way to do this, I would say, is to copy your current eyes and then create some eyelids and squish them down a little bit and change the color. So let's duplicate this layer. And we'll name this one eyes closed. And then select both eyes. Then go to your scale points tool. and squish the eyes down just a little bit. You don't have to do it a whole lot. Now let's grab the eyedropper tool and come over here to our fill settings and choose a darker skin color. It doesn't have to be much, just a little bit darker than what we currently have. Then with the paint bucket tool, we can fill in these eyes. And we'll also need a line. So let's grab the add point tool. And starting about here, we can just click and drag down like this. And do the same for this side as, whoa, this side as well. Actually, let me undo that and try it again. There we go, that'll work. Now, take your fill uh, tool and fill in those lines so that they are now visible. Next, we need to hide the pupils, obviously when the eyes are closed. Now, some people create the pupils on the eyes themselves. I typically don't like to do this because it's easier for me to move the pupils around if I need to, if they're on their own layer. So, all we need to do is make a switch layer for the pupils 
and then we can essentially do what we did here and that is have two switch layers with two instances each for the eyes essentially. So to do this let's make a new layer for the pupils switch we'll name it pupils switch and then we'll just move our pupils then into that layer. Now of course they'll move and snap back again so we can just take our translate layer tool and nudge them back where they need to be about right there and now very simply for the switch on this we just need a blank vector layer so let's go to new layer vector and we'll name this one no pupils so now we have no pupils for the eyes closed and we have pupils for the eyes open so that is how the switch layer will work and to test this let's just go to frame one as a test. Let's say on frame one you want the eyes open. So what you would do is right click on your switch layer and choose the pupils layer for the pupil switch layer and for your eyes you choose eyes open. So now they are open and then if we advance let's say to frame one or one second in I should say we want them to close so then we just right click eyes closed right click no pupils so now when we go and look at this we can animate this out if we snap back one frame our eyes are open we go forward they're closed and that is essentially how the switch layers work and you'll be seeing a lot of that as we continue on but for right now I will delete these keyframes as they are not needed and we can continue designing our switch layers. The next will be the mouth. So next we will make a new switch layer. So coming over here to your mouth, I'll just click on that layer and then click on new layer and choose switch. Now I will type out mouth switch. Oops. There we go and drag my mouth into the switch layer. Then of course, grab that layer like I have for the pupils and the eyes and just move it up so that we are repositioned correctly. So for the mouth, we want to do a few different things. It'd be nice to have an open version of the mouth as well as a version that shows teeth and just some variations of that in between. That way we are covered and we have the mouth situated when we start going into the animation process. So to begin, let's make a new layer and we'll name this one open. Now grabbing the add point tool, and making sure that autofill is on as well as turning the fill to black. We'll start near the bottom of the nose and making sure that we're lined up with the line for the nose. I will come down and go like this. And just add some points along the route here. Go like that. And like that. And then after you have the outline of your open mouth, I'll start right about here and draw a few points going down like this. And then taking the paint bucket tool, I will just click and click here as well to make sure that my lines are also 
filled in. And in order to fill those lines in, you may need to choose stroke after you fill this in to fill the lines in. But now that will create our open mouth. And we can now use that for like when Steve becomes surprised or whatever comes up as he's driving that van. So next, let's make a mouth where he is showing his teeth. So let's make a new layer. And we can name this teeth or closed mouth. However, if you name it closed mouth, you might get that confused with the other mouth, the starting mouth. So I'll just name it teeth for right now. And grabbing the add point tool. And also I will grab the fill color to be white this time. Starting where I did last time, I'm going to draw something that was very similar to the open mouth pose. There'll just be one slight difference. So I'll drag down and then go over like this. Now for the line that goes down, I'm going to make it more straight. So I'll double click on this point and then drag down like this. That'll give us a bit of a more straight line because you basically have two points back to back that dictate the line to be straight. And finally, we need to add a line that goes across to indicate that we have the teeth being closed. So starting right here, I can just double click and then drag over like this and release. And if need be, grab the paint bucket tool and choose stroke and click to put that line in. So now if we go back to open mouth and close, we can see that there's some variation as to where the mouth um, line right here goes. So when we go to open, it shoots like that. When we go back to close, it's um, more back towards the nose. Um, in order to change this so it looks more consistent, we can simply take the uh, translate points tool or the translate layer tool, whichever one you want. If you do the translate points tool, just make sure all of your points are selected and just nudge it forward a bit like this just to line it up more with where the other mouth was. And if we want to, we can always, again, click the open mouth to see where this will end up. And for the most part, it looks like we're pretty good here where both of these models will line up. And that looks good. Okay, so next, we want to do a couple of variations of the open mouth. So for instance, if you remember in the promo video, we have Steve holding on to his hamburger with his teeth. He's holding the hamburger in his mouth. So first, let's start with the teeth grab for the hamburger. So make a new layer. And we can even name this teeth grab if we want, because I don't really know how else to define it right now. And grabbing the add point tool, we can zoom in. Oh, and before I begin, I will choose autofill um, to be off this time. Now starting here, I will move down and then over like this. Zoom in a bit here. Now, what I want to do is create teeth at the top and bottom since we're doing the pose where he is biting the hamburger. So now, starting at this point, I'll double click, and then move down, double click again, and then move over. When you double click like that, it sets two points back to back and creates a straight edge without you having to go to the sharp corners function and mess with that. So then starting down here, I'll do the same, double click, move up, and over like this. 
And finally, I will do the same um, thing I did before with the open mouth pose by coming over here and just coming down like this. So now I will grab the paint bucket tool, choose both and fill in my teeth like so. Come over to the fill color and choose black. Fill in the black area. And we can choose stroke as well and just click on the lines to make sure that those are filled in. Now the thing about this is when we get to the part where we make the hamburger and we put it in his mouth, we may need to adjust the mouth again because depending on the size of the hamburger, we might need to raise the teeth up, we might need to expand the opening of the mouth and so on. But for right now, we can leave that and we can make those minor adjustments if necessary when we get to that point in the series. So next, we have the chewing mouth where we have basically the teeth being exposed again. And we can basically double up on this. Um, because really, if we do another pose like this, it's probably going to be really similar. We could do a couple of variations. We could shrink the mouth or squish it a bit so it looks a little bit different. We could adjust the way the teeth are positioned and so on. But for right now, I think I will leave it because really, that animation happens so quick in the video where he is chewing that I don't think it's going to really matter that we have one pose that serves two purposes. Finally, let's make the smile. So we will just make a new layer. And we can name it Smile. Come over here to the Add Point tool. And starting about here, go down. And then over like this. and up and then come down to here and make the lip and just for comparison I'm gonna look at the closed version of the mouth and we need to maybe bring this up just a little bit so I'll shrink this and grab this and bring it up like that and that's more um, symmetrical to how the other one looks uh, as far as where the position is and how far the mouth comes down. So then I will take my paint bucket tool and just use the line option and click to fill in. And I can also do the taper effect like I did for the other part of the mouth. And again, if we come back here, come back here we can maybe even grab all this and nudge it forward a little bit and that will work so finally what I would suggest is you go back through all the poses of the mouth and make sure that they all line up here that your line starts here and goes through so we have the line there we go to teeth grab that looks pretty good that looks good looks good and looks good you're gonna have a couple of very minor variations, but for the most part, it's in the same area, and I think that will work out. And remember, as always, you can at any time go back and readjust this stuff, and that is something you will do as the animation process continues. It's just starting with these switch layers, it gives you a jump start. So when you're ready to get started in the animation process, you're not bogged down by having to create a bunch of switch layers which you can do initially at this stage so anyway that wraps up this lesson make sure you go to file and save so that your work is saved because we will be using this and importing this character into our animated scenes as we venture forth and yeah that will do it thanks for watching guys and i will see you next time